Welcome to today's episode, and I'm happy to be back in the studio here in Orlando, where we're going to introduce kind of a new format of the podcast. It's going to be a little less formal, scripted. It's just going to be, you know, me kind of going through some categories. Uh, Every episode, it's going to be a continuous feed for you guys, and we think that this new format you will really appreciate, and it'll be a little more uh, interactive with our listeners. So thanks for stopping by and checking us out once again. And let me get into our first topic of this episode where I'm going to touch on, probably do this every episode where I touch on a current event or something more involved in pop culture. For today's episode, I'm going to touch on the Mbappe Contract. So, according to Yahoo Sports, the French forward Kylian Mbappe, who plays professional football, or as we like to call it over here in the States, soccer, for PSG, was offered a mega offer of $774 million from the Saudi Arabian club Al Hilal. Mbappe reportedly isn't even interested in this deal, but this deal is so outrageous. I looked at it last night on Twitter and there was a numerous, uh, accounts or whatever X, whatever we want to call it nowadays, Twitter or X, I, I, um, am struggling to keep up with that, but, uh, reportedly Mbappe's, you know, and he's not interested, but <clears throat> this is, uh, an offer from Al Hilal, the Saudi Arabian club after, you know, they swung and miss on, um, MLS's newest star, Messi, who, you know, if you saw that the other night, I think it was last week, um, he played his first game for the Miami club here in Florida, and it was just nuts. He made a game-winning goal. I mean, he couldn't have uh, captured that moment any better. Um, So, yeah, for our current event, that's crazy. If you guys want to let me know how you feel about that gigantic deal, I don't know if I was offered $774 million, you wouldn't have to ask me twice uh, a lot of the memes I saw was like the Forrest Gump meme where he, he's just running down the street, and that's pretty accurate. Moving on to our next topic is um, we're going to go into a kind of a revenue opportunity, and I would like to try to touch on this on every episode. And, it, you know, this will go back and forth when we have guests on. So for this episode, we're going to touch on the Tax Pass mobile site. Uh, brought to you by Crosslink. So the mobile site gives tax professionals another way to um, reach their taxpayers in a you know a different way. So this mobile site comes integrated with any of the Crosslink professional tax software solutions, and this makes it super easy to communicate back and forth through this mobile site with the professional and the taxpayer, but it also gives them a unique way for them to generate a link that they can also send out to any list that they have of customers or leads that they can, you know, conjure up some email that this will make it easy to market to those customers. And, you know, every link is unique to your office. You can also co-brand your site so it can include your logo. And like I said, you can communicate within this mobile site when the taxpayers register their account. They'll be locked into your unique location. And at that point, they can basically fill out all the client information details of that tax return for them. And they can submit supporting documentation, W-2s, IDs, things of that sort that will, you know, through the automation will go right into that specific tax return and you'll be notified um, of that upload once the customer then sends it off um, at that end of that process. So we think that's a really good opportunity for people to generate more revenue because, you know, in the industry now, there's a lot of that going on, the turbo taxes of the world where they're marketing not only to the individuals who want to file online, but now they're reaching the 
professional side where you, you can, um, you know, they're reaching, they're reaching out to the people that want to use a professional and go through their platform as well. Um, and then, you know, obviously it's just a, another tier into their, their system. So this kind of, kind of helps neg- negate a lot of that, um, from happening to your office. So we think this is a good tool for you guys to utilize and it's no additional cost. So it's totally free. And it comes, like I said, fully integrated with that Crosslink software. So, um, that's the revenue opportunity discussion that we're having today on this episode and moving on into a more, uh, technological news. What else am I going to talk about other than artificial intelligence, AI? So there's been a lot of discussion in the past about chat GPT, and that's kind of built over the last six months and evolved into chat chat GPT-4, which is a new powerful version of OpenAI's chat GPT. So when I was scouring the web for, you know, applications that, AI can be utilized in the tax industry. One of the articles I came across was from taxpolicycenter.org from the author Robert A. Weinberger. And I'm quoting this from the article, tax accounting and consulting firms are moving quickly to take advantage of the technology professionals of the of the technology, sorry. Professionals in 250 firms have partnered with Blue Jay Tax, an AI tool for tax research and analysis and planning that aids in analyzing legislation and litigation to predict tax scenario outcomes with speed and accuracy. So what this is telling me, this specific um, you know, program or platform, Blue Jay is, you know, utilizing um, you know, AI to take the legislation and the litigation and analyze the data quickly and, you know, probably spit out outcomes for, you know, people that are in consulting firms um, in the accounting world. And this makes it just faster, quicker, you know, for those operations to perform these tasks. I don't think, you know, from what I've experienced in um, AI that it's totally going to remove, you know, the need for the human. But what we, what we can do as humans is get better at prompting and using the tools to speed up our processes in our business. So I just kind of wanted to touch on a couple of past experiences that the industry has probably seen with AI. Back in 2017, H&R Block actually experimented with AI using the tool called Watson. If you remember, the commercials commercials came out and they, they were utilizing this Watson that they called it. Um, it kind of just disappeared. I don't really know what happened to it. Maybe it's still around. Um, also in 2022, so last year, TurboTax used AI to match their customers with the right human tax professionals. So there was a series of prompts that this AI would gather and then it would match you up with a correct tax professional for your situation. Just kind of curious what you guys think about the subject of AI and if you have any comments or um, scenarios where you think AI can be you know, instrumental into the tax industry, go ahead and leave some comments um, in that, and then we'll take a look at them and maybe we'll discuss them on a further episode. Um, moving on from the technology, we're going to go right into some latest IRS news and <clears throat> from the, the actual IRS release, I'm going to read the, the latest news on this is as part of a larger transformation effort, the internal revenue service announced a major policy change that will in most unannounced visits to taxpayers by agency revenue officers to reduce public confusion and enhance overall safety measures for taxpayers and employees. The change reverses a decade-long practice by IRS revenue officers, the unarmed agency employees whose duties include visiting households and businesses to help taxpayers resolve their account balances by collecting unpaid taxes and unfiled tax returns. Effective immediately, 
unannounced visits will end except in a few unique circumstances and will be replaced with mailed letters to schedule meetings. So <clears throat> I see this as a, a good thing. Um, one, you know, there's no more worrying of people coming knocking on your door. But two, I mean, for the IRS agents, <clears throat> that job's got to be, you know, one of the, you know, tougher jobs to do, you know, going to someone's door and, and trying to collect. I mean, that's always something that's probably dangerous, especially in some scenarios or, you know, uh, places where they go. Um, I got to think that that's one of the jobs that, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that job, but, uh, you know, two, and I think it goes on into the IR, the release later on in that release, and I'll leave that release in the show notes, but the the scams and the fraud that happens with these scenarios, this is going to, you know, mitigate that as well as where people are impersonating these IRS agents and not only confusing the taxpayers, but also the actual police in these scenarios. So, you know, I think this was a good move from the IRS in... One of the quotes from the IRS commissioner, Danny Werfel, he said, we are taking a fresh look at how the IRS operates to better serve taxpayers and the nation. And making this change is a common sense step. Changing this longstanding procedure will increase confidence in our tax administration work and improve overall safety for taxpayers and the IRS employees. And I agree. I think this is a, like I said, a good move from the IRS and <clears throat> you know, hopefully they use, a lot, you know, some of these funds that they got to, that in order for them to do this out of the last bill, um, you know, to step up some of those efforts. But that's the news for the, IR, the IRS um, this episode. Also, I'd like to encourage you guys, um, for you, those of you that are at the IRS nationwide tax forms, those are going on currently as I'm recording this the Atlanta show we are in, and um, there's a couple other shows coming for. So if you go to these shows, make sure you check us out at the Crosslink booth and where we will be happy to you know, speak with you about any of our products and ser- services. And you, know, you can even uh, schedule a demo with the teams. And you know, there are some you know, cool prizes that you guys can win along the way. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. It's kind of a new format. It's more loose, just kind of off the top um, with me. And then hopefully I can get some guests along the way to sit down with me and and discuss some more of the topics, but kind of the formatting that we did today where we do some like pop culture stuff. that's kind of just fun. Um, We'll do some revenue opportunities, technology news, IRS news, and then, you know, as we progress, you guys will be more current with what's going on in the industry. So thanks again for checking out this episode. I'm Zach Kreitz, the host of the Tax First Podcast Experience, and I'll catch you on the next one.